Hello, I'm Christopher Springman. And for patient Neil Chagedny, her personal chronic kidney disease journey has been challenging as she tells this month's NEF Talk about how she finally discovered and enthusiastically embraced home hemodialysis. And I would have chosen to die, except that I was taking care of my mother. And the second was the fact that the nephrologist in the hospital who saw me on an emergency basis told me about home dialysis. And in all the years that I had been struggling against CKD, kidney disease, no one ever mentioned that option. Those two things really saved my life. Niels' experience compelled her to become an outspoken patient advocate for Home Dialyzers United, and she is ferociously independent. Well, that is true. I dialyze to live. I don't live to dialyze. I have made it a point to live my life as normally as possible. I call it my oil change. The few times a week that I do my dialysis treatment, it's when I relax, I kind of go into my zone, I totally chill out, um, and I am revitalized. Good morning, my name is Neil Cha. I am a home dialyzer for the past seven years and I started at the age of 63. With me are my grandchildren. They were my helpers when I started. I've got a funny story about Chloe here, who was 10 at the time, and she actually loved taking care of my bandages uh, and taking out my needles. Uh, <clears throat> one of the funny things in a memento that I kept from that time is her bill. She sent me a weekly tab for taking the bandages, a back rub, and uh, so forth, and it totaled $27. Why don't you hold it up to the camera? Well, look. Pretty cheap if I said so. So I'm retired, and my one indulgence is sleeping in and getting off to a slow start in the morning. Once I'm up, I make myself a perfect latte. If you're on any liquid and or dietary restrictions, one of the benefits of home dialysis is that you'll have the freedom to eat and drink what you want with moderation. So while coffee is a little high in phosphorus, if you're doing more frequent home treatments, this is not a problem. <clears throat> and I indulged in buying a milk frother so I can have my perfectly steamed latte every morning. You need to learn about nutrition and diet. I bet you don't know that whole cream and half and half have way less phosphates than most artificial creamers. Try to stick with natural, unprocessed whole foods and your body and labs will thank you for it. While I enjoy my perfect latte, I start the day with a few crossword puzzles and it kind of gets my mind going. And I also think and plan my day, run errands, am I gonna work on some projects, whatever it is. Keeping active is critical to good health. Find something that you love to do, whatever it is, from taking care of grandkids to going to school to volunteer work or going to work full or part-time. We can't let this disease control us. <clears throat> With home dialysis, we can control the disease and the treatments. For me, within months of starting dialysis, I found my niche volunteering for Home Dialysers United. I started by asking questions on their Facebook page and then later was asked to join the board. And I never looked back. It's the hardest job I never got paid for and it's the reason I get out of bed in the morning. You have to find a reason to get out of bed in the morning. What's your reason? Dialysis can be a family affair. Well, it's probably good for your family to see kind of what your daily routine is so they can, you know, pitch in and help if needed or just, you know, yep. understand you better. Thank you. Sure. There's drug tape on the bottom. All right. So what would you say to somebody who's kind of looking to get their family involved or just make them understand what you have to do on a daily basis? So it's really important that you let 
you and the family come to whatever, uh, I just said this the other day in an interview, when it comes to involving your family, it's really important to let everyone decide what, how, what level of involvement they want. I am fortunate that I have a guest bedroom, we're standing in it, that I can dedicate to my treatment. Even if you don't have that luxury, there are some tips that we can show you to keep your home from looking like a hospital. <clears throat> I use cupboards and chests of drawers to store all my supplies. Here are laboratory uh, supplies. Here's some medical supplies. And here's where I store my saline. We also have, under the bed, storage trays, such as this, where I store additional supplies needed to operate the machine. This brings me to another key point. You need to know your labs. When you are dialyzing at home, it is really important to know and understand all of your labs. Learn where your hemoglobin is and how you feel at your best, so you, that's a goal you want to achieve. Check your T-sat, your ferritin levels. That's your iron and that's for your anemia. You want to understand what, what, at what levels those uh, work. So that if you're breathless, uh, out of breath, short of breath, you need to understand where those levels are so that you can improve them. Um, if you're doing home hemodialysis, you'll be taught to draw your own labs once a month and send them off. The hardest part of home dialysis will be learning how to self cannulate. There are tons of videos that will help you with this and I'm not going to show you how in this video. What I am going to do is tell you that it is 10 times easier than you could possibly imagine. And one thing that helps is using a lidocaine or Emla cream to numb the area. I'm a wuss <clears throat> and I use it every time. You need to plan to administer it at least one to two hours before treatment to be most effective and here's how I do that. So my fistula is in my upper arm. I have the cream ready. Oh, not that, the uh, yellow press and seal. This is weird. Okay, so here's one of my little handy dandy tips that they're not going to show you at the clinic. I apply to my arm, and my fistula, a nice, healthy dab of cream. Don't, don't cheat on this. And I use press and seal because it doesn't slide around. They'll tell you to use saran wrap, but it slides around. So, and what activates the Emla cream is the heat and the moisture that builds up against your skin. So from my last sip of coffee till about five-ish, I don't think about dialysis, kidney disease, or having a chronic illness. I just go about my day. One issue that always comes up with home hemodialysis is your supplies and they can be overwhelming at first. I'm gonna show you how you can incorporate everything you need into your daily life. <clears throat> One or two days a month, your supplies will arrive, and this requires a little extra effort. Your clinic will be able to arrange with you how you wish to receive your supplies. If you have limited storage, which I do, you may be able to receive dialysis supplies in two deliveries instead of one. Some clinics contract for the delivery to bring the boxes into your home and rotate your stock although this has been suspended during COVID. Others, like myself, get them via FedEx or UPS and they're delivered to my front door. I can still manage my small amount of supplies, <clears throat> sometimes with the help of my grandkids who you met earlier. You saw my various storage methods. First tip, get a cart. This is a workhorse. I got it on Amazon. It's a, called the Magna Cart, and it goes with me when I travel and moves my supplies. When the supplies arrive, I take them out of the box, fold the boxes for recycling, and put the sacks on the cart, moving them to the bedroom and then the underbed storage trays. 
Your smaller ancillary supplies, such as the needles, preps, and so forth, are supplied by your nurse during your clinic visit or ordered through your nurse or your designated supplier. I store these in inexpensive plastic drawer units, such as you saw, and or the handy carry-all that I use during treatment. Once I'm on treatment and I'm comfy in my bed, I'm watching my favorite TV show, I can totally relax. I call it going into the zone. This is what home dialysis is all about. And I'm gonna leave you with one final thought. I've talked with thousands of dialyzers in center and home, and after cannulation, the next biggest fear of home dialysis is infection. And I cannot leave you without talking about the rates of infection in home dialysis. It's almost non-existence. I am not saying it can't happen, but your chance of getting an infection in your own home is minimal, even if you have pets. For one thing, these are germs that your body knows. When you go into a hospital, a clinic, a lab, a doctor's office, you encounter germs that your body does not know and cannot fight. I've been doing home dialysis seven years at home alone, and I have had no, that's none, zero infections. Many of our home patients get infections after having to do an in-center or in-hospital treatment. So I want to leave you with these final thoughts. Home dialysis is achievable. You can easily adapt it to your life and adjust to treating at home, providing you with a newfound independence and freedom. Home dialysis is safer than in-center and hospital dialysis. No one will take better care of yourself than you. Trust me, there's hardly anything that you can do during your home treatment that will endanger your life. I can't promise that you won't have some scary moments, but I can assure you that you'll be able to handle them <clears throat> and react and respond accordingly. There are now over 15,000 or more of us who are doing home treatments and are here today to tell you it will be okay. You will feel better, live longer, and be healthier. Finally, you will dialyze to live and no longer live to dialyze.